the irony is that I wouldn't know the first thing about love. And I only made a career out of it. So, uh, you know, stranger things have happened, but this is the strangest part of my career. And I realized I can only finish 10% of the film in 20 days. 70% of the budget spent already. I, I didn't know what I was shooting. I still don't know what I'm doing in the film. I'm always confused. I liked the idea of changing that uh, particular casting around. That gave me a certain excitement. And I wish that people would cast more imaginatively. This journey as a filmmaker, it's very solitary kind of a process. I, I didn't know how to write, didn't know any writers, you know. I turned filmmaker by accident. The thing that I've learned is that there are days when you go home and you feel really horrible about being a filmmaker. And there are days when you go home, you feel like you've trapped magic for eternity. Even if it fails, let it be with my gut. It's not working at all. Let me take the blame. I don't want someone else to confuse me. The main motive was not to tell this message, but to show that what if there was a camera there shooting everything, if cinema could have been used in a better way in this situation. Right now, I've got a tagline that I'm, I'm a feminist kind of filmmaker, a political filmmaker. If there is no feminism in my film, people try to find out feminism. Welcome to the Film Companion Director's Adda. First of all, I can't tell you how thrilled I am to be sitting here with such incredible artists. Um, you all have given us such amazing films this year. These films have been transportive, terrifying, magical, just gorgeous. The films you've made have brought people back to theatres. And you, Bokala, yeah have said and done in less than 30 minutes what many people could not say or do in three hours. You know, you've yeah. been very kind. Yeah. I'm totally out of place yeah. here. Hi, huh? everybody's <laughs> a director, Papa. I'm no, actually listen, only an actor. That short Quietly. Deserves her Cut. triple press. That's right, huh? <laughs> Thank you. Now she says awkward with face. Now yeah. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's move on. Let's move on. I'll try not to talk. <gasps> <laughs> That's so mean. So I'm going to start with something that S.S. Rajamoli said on our last year's round. He said when a director begins, he or she gets excited by an idea, right? You fall in love, you <coughs> want to tell everyone that idea, and you start this job. But somewhere in that journey, you have a moment of utter doubt. Okay, and you're like, why did we begin? Why did we start this? What does this, any of this mean? And at that point, you have to remember what made you fall in love. You have to remember that excitement of that beginning and that first flush of passion. So I want all of you to tell me, on these films that you just made, when did this doubt happen? And how did you remember the excitement? Pompana, let me start with you. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I think the doubt though happens all the time, every day. Even sitting here, I'm reminding myself, now the film is made, I don't have to worry, you know, anymore. Um, and I think that whenever you start anything creative, it's really a sense of, I want to share this feeling of what it is, uh, you know, to live. It's an experience of living. Um, in some ways, like when, I, because I had only very few shooting days, it's a small, uh, short film. So the uh, I, there's actually no place, room for any... Uh, doubt or anything else because you have to finish like one day though we were shooting 21 hours i think straight you know so it's just like you know like you've done this major prep all your doubts and all whatever you have to hajam karna padega abhi. now you just have to go ahead and make the film otherwise doubts are there all the time every day it's just like hoping for the best tell it for you uh actually the idea was uh it, it was a um, well not a tragic circumstance but it was a, a very unfortunate time that i had to come up with an idea which was a we were hit by the pandemic i was uh, prepping for a film Bhakta, and i was going on the sets um I had prepped for two and a half years uh and i was going on the sets in april and march we were hit by the pandemic and then for various reasons i realized logistically it was impossible for me to make that uh so and we were all just secluded in our homes and I would go with my notepad and pen because I still don't type on a laptop. 
I you still write? I still write. I mean, I cannot type on a laptop. I don't know what to do with it. Like, I, I feel like... Long hand me writing. And very, like, uh, unreadable. <laughs> like, it's all scribbled. And uh, I just sat there for about 10 days. Nothing was within me. And then one day I went back to a story of uh, my father's family. It happened with my uncle. Um, and I just went back to it. And then I began the journey of developing the story with a group of three writers, actually. I made, like, a writer's room with Shashank and Ishita and Sumit. And then the doubts happened again because of COVID, because every time you, we got two months off, you, start, you started seeing your rushes and like, is this going to work out? Like there was one point where I thought myself that this may not make any sense to anyone. It's been, it's too long. I'm directing up to seven years. I was doubting myself. I was doubting the film. I was doubting the industry. I was doubting how our film's going to work. So when you talk about doubt, it was a big shout in our, in, in my mind. And I'm sure the collective minds of, of the film fraternity because at one point we were told like no one's coming back to the cinema halls uh you know there's a digital takeover uh so yeah when you say doubt there was a plenty till the day i think my film released i was uh a sight uh not for sore eyes but for for like i was looking or walking around like like a like a dead man walking i was that stressed so yeah the, the stress and doubt doesn't leave you this is like this journey is full of doubts. It started with doubt for me because I wanted uh, a story where Suri could uh, fit in as the lead. Suri was, uh, has been doing comedy roles for the past like 10, 12 years. Mm -hmm. And to make him the protagonist of a, of a story, which is also a serious one, there itself I had the doubt. And uh, then I started working on a novella based on a novella and then I after 15 days like after investing myself into that world and started liking that I got to know from the writer that he'd given rights to someone else oh. then but but I really liked the world and the people in the world so I I sent him whatever I had written and said can you make us like story out of whatever that I've written so that I can legitimize my, my <laughs> script and, and stay away from the person who's bought the rights of that original story, claiming that I, I stole from that. Then he said, no, no, I had written something similar in 98 itself. So he gave me a six page short story. And that is where this journey started for me. And I told my producer that I will finish this film in uh, 35 days, the way I finished Bizar Night. And we went to the locations. And then I realized I can only finish 10% of the film in 20 days. So we, and 70% of the budget spent already. Oh, no. So, <laughs> so I, I came down and, and we got down the hill and the location that we were in did not allow any vehicles to go there. So we had to carry all the uh, like, like equipments there and then we built tents for like 250 people. We built toilets there and then we stayed there. We built like 20 soil, no not 20, like I, I think 10 or 12 toilets for the village villagers there Lovely. and then we were using it and one fine day we had one storm coming all the tents were like gone and then we had to come down and once we were on the planes I realized that I can't finish this film then I called my producer and said sir should we think of working on something else he said sir already we've spent most of the budget why not we try <laughs> why not we try pursuing this itself then I said, okay, going to the hills is a problem. I will try to figure out a, a location where I can shoot here. The, 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 there's, a, there's a sequence of the base camp and all of that. I thought I'll shoot that in like 10 days and we, we'll be done with most of the film. Then I go there and then, we, and then once I see the location, I start liking it. And then I start shooting it. Like <clears throat> after 40 days also, I've not finished what I wanted to finish in 10 days. So by that time, the budget was triple the numbers that what I said so so then I was shooting and then Vijay Sethupati came into the film and then when Vijay Sethupati came in the producer was relieved that we can sell it for a better price and because he came in I started writing more and uh, by the end of 120 days of shoot I called my producer and said I think we'll, we'll have to find a way to break even and then he said Sir, whatever you shoot, you shoot. 
I had another it? yeah, I had another 40 50 days of shoot left. Is that why you divided the film into two? I had to. <laughs> <laughs> no other no other no and other. then it was also more. Yeah. I thought uh, then I we decided that we'll make it into a two part thing. And then once we decided that we'll make it a two part thing, uh, a simple intermission sequence ended up being one main act, action sequence for the climax of the first part. And then went back to the first opening of the film, which was not working. Then we decided to execute one shot, like that, that 10 minute shot. There's we have to talk long, about yeah, that one, shot. One, one, one long <laughs> yeah. take. And then we somehow managed and finished the first part. Then after the release of the first part, now I'm wondering what to do with the second part. I, I, I'm, 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 done. I'm done with the second part. I'm, it's ready. I'm trying to send it to festivals. But for the theater, I think something is missing. So I, I told my producer I'll shoot for 10 days. He said, okay, now I'm shot for 18 days. I think I have another 30 days. Is Who is this? <laughs> <laughs> Who is this? I feel it's in worship. This man. It's Elmer Kumar. He lives in Chennai. Very yeah. <laughs> taking the next flight to Chennai. This, producer, this magnanimous I, I, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I said I'll finish the film in four and a half hours. For the first part alone, we spent around 65. I mean, he spent around 65. So the budgeting, somebody who had no clue has done. Obviously. I didn't have any clue of what I'm going to shoot. <laughs> I was just shooting. Oh God, so... I, I didn't know what I was shooting. I still don't know what I'm doing with the film. Wow. I just... You just made a great film. With your track record, it's very difficult to believe you didn't know what you're doing. <laughs> it's very <difficult laughs> sometimes, sometimes it's it's very... Uh, uh, I, I, I'm... I'm always confused. I'm, I'm not sure of what I want to do. And my team knows how to work around me. They'll say, okay, who all you want? Okay, these are the actors. And what are the props you think you might need? I think I will need these things. And I think we need to have this period's costume, like 70s costumes. Okay, now that's all. They'll not ask for the scene. They'll not ask for any details. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. So I called Vijay Sethupati to act for eight days in the film. He's already finished more than 70 days. You are like you, you are self sabotaging yourself. <laughs> I'm putting so many allegations against yourself. Yeah. Confessions. I, like you're making no pitch to a, a producer, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, this is like a statement. Like if if you like something in my film, please be prepared for this. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Gio, <laughs> 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 <Wow. laughs> <laughs> what about you? I have a lot of doubts, uh, but I clear with myself. I uh, just think in the side of uh, audience and I just resolve that. And the same time, I already discussed with my, my partner, Bina, and my DOP, my editor. And then only I got an answer. Uh, if you delete this, if you add something or not, that's why I'm working. And same uh, thing, I'm doing uh, handwriting till now. And the same way, I can only read that. <laughs> and, and there is no proper screen for, for, for me. When I'm writing, just, just see no as only. But proper screenplay means there is a screenplay, but proper dialogue is not there. I'm improvising. I'm waiting for the last minute for getting a dialogue, getting a polished one, a fine-tuned version. So every time I'm, I'm also a kind of uh, audience. When when we seeing on uh, watch on a theater, what I, I feel, what I felt, that is I'm thinking always. So that is a uh, my my <laughs> kind of film making. This is incredible because in our heads, like everyone's fully in control of their craft. There's a storyboard. Everyone knows exactly what they're doing. And here you are saying, that I, I think it depends. This is not a proper way. This huh. is comfort. This is my comfort. Right. You work yeah. best like yeah. this. Yeah, yeah, that's all. Avinash. You? Do you follow this school? Of course, it's completely in doubt, anxiety, everything, constantly. Like, I turned filmmaker by accident. I studied cinematography. <laughs> Killa happened 10 years back. And I had to wait for 10 years for my second feature film. You know, so uh, it's, it, it, it was uh, like, yeah, I, mean, I didn't know where to pitch, how to pitch. But when Patal Look happened, I, I sort of like uh, gathered a little bit of courage. And then I stopped being a cinematographer and, and this journey 
as a filmmaker, you know, it's 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 very solitary kind of a process. I I didn't know how to write, didn't know any writers, you know. So 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 just to spend time with yourself during the pandemic, and that decision sort of like like took like a lot uh, inside, and uh, yeah, and then when I got to know that Padal Look season two is not happening, it got pushed because of some some problems, and uh, I didn't know what to do, and I I was like I I didn't want to go back being a cinematographer. Uh, particularly for this time because I waited uh, like for for a long time, you know, and then uh, uh, I, uh, like okay. when then some like you're pushed to the limits. I had only four months, and I I went to meet my uh, dearest friend Chetan Tamani, and we had a very long conversation. And I like for eight nine hours we were talking, and I I really felt very charged up. I I went to my home. I started writing at twelve o'clock in the night. And in the morning, I had all the pointers. And in in couple of weeks' time, we made the screenplay. I called Varun Grover. That Varun, this is what I want to do. Would you be uh, okay to write, like, consider to write dialogues? And he heard it and he liked it. Similarly, actors, I I sent them the script and they got on board. And in in four months' time, uh, we had shot our film in in twenty five days. So that's so yeah, that that was the journey with three of us. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Hey, uh, for me, this particular film has been riddled films. with films <laughs> has been riddled with uh, doubt from from a very long time because I wrote this script wrote wrote this idea about twelve thirteen years ago, and every time I pitched it, I was met with rejection because they were like, nobody's going to watch this. Uh, it's not. It doesn't have the right elements for it to work commercially, and. So it it was it was always something that people were said is not going to work. So I had carried it with me all this while. So there's a lot of doubt within yourself, and the job description, like he said, like everybody is sort of alluded to, is it is anxiety. It is driven by anxiety. But the demand of the job is also to ensure that you don't distribute the anxiety to everybody around you. You keep it with you. You you have to handle it. And give the notion that you are in control. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, because <laughs> because actors don't do well if 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 it comes across like you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. If producer producer wouldn't be happy if you come across like you don't know. So it it the best way I have figured out is to be vulnerable and to be as communicative and uh, you know like, uh, sort of open yourself up to your team and that. Sort of allows other people also to be vulnerable with you, and to make something like that is a very beautiful process. And and over a period of time, you realize you don't get everything right, and it's okay. You know, there are days where the more number of days you work in films. This is my fourth film. I mean, if I consider both films as two films separately, then it is four films. The thing that I've learned is that you'll have good days and you'll have bad days, and there are days when you go home and you feel really horrible about. About being a filmmaker, and there are days when you go home and it's just you feel like you've trapped magic for eternity, you know. So you just you you learn how to deal with that better with time, yeah. and uh, it, I think that doubt is a very powerful check uh, for us as filmmakers. It's a very unhealthy space if you are very confident internally. I, in fact, if I shoot something very confidently. I start doubting myself even <laughs> more because I'm like, wait, this can't be, this can't be right. You know, it wasn't so easy. It wasn't. It, it's yeah. like this happened too easily. There's yeah. something abyss. You know. Yeah. yeah. So it it is. I mean, it's a beautiful thing. I really enjoy it. But the anxiety you get used to it so much <laughs> that when it goes away, you don't know what to do. It's uh, it's actually uh, you know you you're like you feel suddenly empty, which is what is happening now. You're empty. Yeah, completely. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Nelson? When did you have doubt with Jayla? I had doubt. Uh, doubts were there throughout the process and the writing process. Um, but what made me come out of that is uh, Rajinishes, not literally. You know, I somehow wanted to do on Rajinishes. Oh. So when the block is happening, I convince my. I used to convince myself. Don't leave this project. You have to do this. Somehow you have to do. This. But you had that level of doubt where you wanted to leave the project. Not exactly. If it's not well coming out in the paper, of course it's not going to happen. Mm. Either he will stop it or I will stop it. So that is the thing which make me 
wrote that entire script and after that while shooting also i had the same doubts because um, <coughs> first time i think i made made him play his age so that was the major doubt in me because a lot of people told me no don't uh, make him play his age i'm a let him do whatever he has then already but i was little confident and not confident about it in the both thing but some okay even if it fails let it be with my gut so whatever i feel i'll make it if it's not working also working let me take the blame um, i don't want someone else to convince uh, or confuse me so finally no uh, knowing his audience and what all he did in this 50 years uh, it was a very big challenge and that itself is a big uh, confusion for me whether i can satisfy that much audience or i can see my target for this film is i have to pull maximum number of audience into the theater that is the target uh, so i worked around it i know uh, here and there i am going i am doing something over the top but still that's what people expect from him is what i feel that's what i also enjoy and recently after this uh, ott era uh, what i feel is for big films people come to theater to celebrate and enjoy and just to feel the <laughs> aura of the theater and uh, being rajinish sir rajinish is the bottom backbone of that uh, film is what uh, in my opinion i totally took it in that way and i wrote it in that way and executed in that way and i think it worked finally my doubts cleared only after the release of the film <laughs> Knew that I had my own doubts. After watching the film, I I think I feel that he playing his age was the best thing for the film. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah, I I think it worked the most. Yeah, yeah. I, I, without that, I don't think this film would work as much as it worked. Uh, like but it's worked now. Uh, before starting, so many people were telling me like, don't grey his. Yeah. Don't dye him. Not sorry, dye him. Don't yeah. show his grey hair. Something like that. All like that. but uh, when people were people from the industry saying it so confidently it hit me yeah it shakes you yeah it shakes me yeah. but after a point after 10 days of shoot i was really confident and uh, i saw the scenes were working the scenes were working okay then i left it to the universe let it come whatever like that <coughs> so. kartik when did you leave it to the universe what the bigger than the double x yeah. Actually, I had doubt. I mean, the the idea for this Jigar Nabla came uh, right at after the next year of Jigar Nabla. Jigar Nabla got released in twenty fourteen. Twenty fourteen. Yeah. So twenty fifteen, the project was all set. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm in total contrast with what Vidhi said. Then no, there there was a producer, there was a hero who wanted to do this, and I just had the idea for the first half. I mean, what uh, the film is going, and then uh, and the, I also had one idea where the film takes. I mean, if you have seen the film. Uh, the the first half happens in Madurai and then they travel to some place and then the the main idea of the film is to show what the what's the power of cinema as such and uh, I wanted uh, to show that through a story that doesn't happen in Madurai it's in a total different world so the idea I had that time in two thousand fifteen I had doubt that this is not the right one or this is not uh, so I said no I mean at that time I could have actually started the project because uh, um uh, if if the the complete script is not ready in my, my i mean in writing and uh, this one i i i don't i can't go and do anything in the, in the spot so you need to have it absolutely clear in your mind yeah not not my even the paper also like uh, like <coughs> complete script with the short duration with the otherwise you do need to talk yeah <laughs> 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 got it and he was saying i, I thought even this and he's he's a blessed uh, yeah. <laughs> person yeah. Yeah, i i always tell this any like when someone comes and tells uh, they, they would like to work with me as an ad youngsters come and i tell them if you can learn something from my films please watch them and learn please don't come and learn the way i work that's not the way you should be working yeah. you need you need to write all the producers script. are thankful yeah. <laughs> yeah. i always say that it's see this is an accident i always have this analogy of cricket like when you have proper footwork and you have like you 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 base yourself properly then like you when you're out of form you can gain back your form yeah it's like you know without footwork you hit hitting sixes while you are in form that's what i'm doing now when the form is out then you're gone you can't gain back well so. it's not going to happen 
<laughs> yeah. Huh. Yeah. So uh, that's what. So I'm like quite opposite of Vetri sir, but right. I, I know. So, so you ha- you didn't have the script clearly enough yeah, to make it. Yeah, to where the story is taking. I mean, yeah. uh, so then I left it at that point in 2015, and <laughs> I didn't uh, think of doing it also. And uh, I think now after like those eight nine years, again uh, later again the same like Lawrence sir again asked like, did you even think of of that script again? Do you have the idea now? So then, that time I was after I finished Mahan and I was free for some. Then I again thought about the script, and that time um, uh, actually it is what Nelson said. No, it is actually the universe which came in because um, the ele- the elephant factor and the forest factor came into my mind, and that's when I actually felt yeah, this is going to be the script. And then I started writing, and when I felt confident about the script, I I said okay, and then the film started. So I had doubt eight, eight years back, and that that doubt actually pushed this film for. More than eight years, wow. and then I started it. But I, I I feel it's good because if I had made that film that time, definitely I would have screwed up big time in the film. That's what I, my and uh, I think that that the, the thought process took its time so many years to come into my mind, and then into the script, and then now the film is there. That's yeah. what I believe. Yeah, yeah, which is what you said, Hemant, yeah. about Sapna Saga. Yeah. If you had made it then, it would have been no. Because I think else. some stories demand a certain. evolution of you as a as a creator as well as a writer as well and i think only when you experience a certain emotions yourself and change your world view can you write it effectively otherwise it will feel very filmy yeah. like it won't feel like it is coming from the right place you know it might work it might not work that is secondary but the process of creation should feel like you know it is coming from a place where you are not writing it because the industry demands the scene or this audience demands the scene it's flowing it has it has to flow yeah, yeah. so i think for me the i would whatever i wrote 13 years back 12 years back would be very amateurish in compared to what it is now yeah. it's it's more well thought out and more experienced you know as directors all of you are making hundreds of decisions all day long Right, the doubt is there, anxiety is there, but finally people are coming to you for answers, and you have to give them the answers. I want to talk a little bit about how you arrive at these decisions. How do you decide when to move a camera? How do you decide what lens to use? How do you decide to go wide, close? Like, Karan, you did this sequence in Rocky or Rani where they're both walking. It's a pivotal scene which leads up to the scene where they decide they're going to swap. Right? You do this as a single continuous shot. Which ends with my favorite dialogue of the year: "Handle with care. I'm a fragile," <laughs> which I need on a T-shirt. Yeah. But why do that as a single continuous shot? I think most filmmakers will tell you that uh, <laughs> there's no way. I I would I would be very perplexed to know if that everybody knew that oh this particular scene can be shot in this particular way when you reach that location, even though you've recorded that location, you've seen it a hundred times. In fact, me and uh, Manush, who was the DOP, we discussed that we had like we kept that scene um, for pretty much most of the day because uh, it was a long. It was actually actually the point it starts at in the film uh, is is actually one fourth into the scene. We've already shot in one shot lot before, which got cut in the edit. It starts abruptly a little bit because of uh, whatever reason. And somehow, when I reached the location, I felt. Uh, With it, Ranveer and Alia have such terrific uh, <coughs> conversational chemistry. It's like they allow each other that gap when required. They speak over each other when needed. Uh, you know, two actors who are in sync with each other. That happens only when that happens. You know, mm. uh, I've last seen it with Shahrukh and Kajol. You know, when I worked with them in 1998 and then 2001, and I feel with the both of them, we tried this as it just happened there organically. I took the call. I said, let's try doing it in one, and then see if we need the coverage. But it just, it just, it just went so smoothly that one shot just went so smoothly that we were done by one p.m. And then we were like, we have no other shoot to do <laughs> because nothing else was planned. And you know, I'm also the producer uh, of the film, and I feel like if I call pack up right now, I've lost a day, and I'm staring at my EP. <laughs> And then I'm thinking, should I, for just cheat's sake, do some work, you know, uh, you know, to just pretend that I made use of the day? So then I came up with this big idea. Let's do it from the <laughs> back also. So, so we started, and I was like, where am I feeling really? I am the producer. I should take this call, and I'm exhausted. It's been 
30 days in the heat. So I was like, back up, you know. And then I got a frantic call from Apurva. I was the CEO of my company. And he was like, you, you didn't shoot the whole day. I said, I didn't need to. What could I do? <laughs> we were not. We didn't have another location. Yeah. And that's the upside. And it's happened to me actually with Shah Rukh and Gajal way back in 98. Where they, there's a pivotal moment where they meet each other after eight years. Um, and uh, I just said, you know, I, I explained the scene to them. And they said, oh, awkwardness and whatever. And I played a song for Atmosphere. And the two of them came into the frame. They performed it. Something before the rehearsal began, I told uh, the DOP, Santosh Tundial, I said, just roll the camera. In those days, people weren't aware of camera rolling or anything. We rolled the camera and they came and they shot that whole moment, which I I really believe is is one of the... the I can't say it myself, I don't know why. I, uh, <laughs> but like, it's what, what I've been told uh, is, is like a special part of the film. Yeah. Um, and after we, we set cut, I was like, we're done. Uh, he said, what do you mean? Shah Rukh said, now we'll take, right? I said, no, we're done. I, I rolled. We have, the, we have uh -huh. it in the can. And he was like, no. And we didn't have a monitor on our set. Uh, so I went purely on, because that was the time when monitors were just coming in. You know, we like, we've all worked with, mm -hmm. Uh, like yeah, on yeah. a steady can, on a, on a, right, a steam back and then yeah, yeah. made that transition. Um, so I was like, we've got it. And again, we had nothing to do again after that. And then I looked at my father. But you see, my father, because he was my father, uh, he was like, Tu beta tu garja. Tu soja. Okay, ho gaya na kaam. Aur kuch karne. You don't do it. You don't worry about it. You worked hard enough. Yeah, you worked. Really. He was, anyway, he thought like, he thought I was the most gorgeous person on planet Earth. I was the best director. I used to get scared going anywhere with him because he was such showing off about me. And I was like, <laughs> I used to die because he met Mani sir at, uh, at the same location of Kuch Kuch Hota. And Mani sir was making Dil Se and shooting the Chaiya Chaiya song, which to me, I was wanting to go as a student to watch. And he kept gushing about me to money. <laughs> and, and I'm trying to pinch him to say, please, I beg you, I want to I want to dig a hole and jump into it. Because my money, sir, was God to all of us, you know, and and continues to be. And I, I went home and I said, Papa, you can't. My film hasn't released. He says, Nay, if it's your trumpet, if you don't blow it, who else will? I love it. <laughs> so to go back to your question, it really just happens on set, right? I don't know. I plan. I know that short divisions are made and we do kind yeah. of, we break it down with actors and then, you know, it's, sometimes there's a process that goes on. But some many a time I've noticed that you've broken all of that. Happens specifically to be rock and only not once but four times where I've done one long shot. Yeah. Where I just felt the need to just keep the camera going and worked it out because I felt all great actors, why do I need so much coverage? Yeah. But I think it comes from the moment you're, you're yeah, rehearsing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but you'll all agree with me that the the mother of all long shots is what we has <laughs> yeah. accomplished in Vidhu Dalai part one. I mean, I was watching that in the theater, Veggie, and, and it's horrifying. It's so immersive and what's happening is just so awful. But one part of me was thinking, like, how is he doing this? How is this possible? How has he not cut for now eight, nine, ten minutes? And that shot, at least according to media reports, costs something like eight to ten crore. <laughs> And took three months to stage. Actually, what happened was that was not in the plan to have that <coughs> sequence. I had already told my producer about the Spain track that was supposed to be my first shot. But then as the budget was going higher, I said, sir, we don't need to do it. In the titles, we use all the sounds and all of that. And then we'll show new stippies. Like, you know, newspaper cuttings we can show. And he was okay with it. Like, after three months, he called me and told, Sir, we were already still. Why you hold that back? You can't shoot this in MI, any other film. He's a priest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's do it, he said. Then we had to, my, my art director is someone who will do it very real. So we, he built that bridge with engineers to hold the weight of actual railway compartments. Like we put two compartments, actual compartments there, and then three. The one that falls down is was made, and that itself was, I think, four tons or one. One and a half tons, I'm not sure. So they were like massive structure. The actual structure was built. It took three months. The construction took three months to to assemble all the parts and all. Took some time and. 
it took me a really a long time to shoot and you know going to the spot i realized that this is too big we don't i mean i didn't know what to do with that kind of a set and for me personally when i choose to do a long take is when i don't know where to cut the shot so i then i say okay let's try this out so i go to the spot first day i go to the set and then say okay let's do this part from here you know you you show the siren of the vehicle first it was originally supposed to be an ambulance so the ambulance siren and then the camera comes on goes to this point then we cut and show the details of the family crying and then while i was saying that you know when you cut you're going to emphasize more on that like particular detail and then each and every detail you are you when you show it in when you are specifying something the the whole instead of underlining the 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 whole uh the, the 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 gravity of the situation like when when highlighting each and every detail of or, or the the plight of each and every individual uh passenger i thought i will give a overall view and leave most of it to the audience's imagination instead of staying there yeah. there are some references you know certain lines like you know a newly married couple is there like someone who wanted to go on a pilgrimage is there and then a child is there looking for the mother so all of that is just just you just pass to it but then it stays in your mind yeah. and then we started rehearsing i i asked all my like boys to come back like who have already made films also all of them came and uh, there were around like 40 45 assistant directors working there wow. we rehearsed for 13 days and uh, because of one wrong like you know during a days in rehearsals on a break or during the break lunch break one of the fighters tried to do a rehearsal like b- without the whole team and crew he died yeah it was an accident that uh, that could have been avoided but, but very and then we stopped the shoot after that but then, so before that we we got two takes like two takes so, so we rehearsed for 13 days we shot for two days and then we got that shot but that was not the final shot that we see in the film so i used like four uh, gimbal and four operator who will carry it and then the final one the last guy was on a crane uh with a harness on him so he picked up the camera or uh, sitting on the crane and he was moved and then when he reaches a certain point the harness like they put loops on his body and then he was picked up like 120 feet on a crane and then on the rope he was moved from this corner of the bridge to the other corner so it was it's like, incredible yeah like <laughs> it took a lot of uh, master class is happening <laughs> <laughs> you know nelson you were talking about how you struggled with trying to figure out what rajni sir can do and can't right i think you <clears throat> you went even a step further because in your film you've cast one of the iconic actors of this country and he's playing a gay man uh it's a remarkable film it's it's a story told with such compassion such tenderness but i want to ask about that conversation for you right of course mamudi sir is the producer so he signed up for it he's going into it all eyes open but when you're actually constructing this did you think of how much can i do and is is that one of the reasons why why him his character and his partner are just looking at each other from far we don't even see them ever touch each other right are those things you thought about actually this thing was you know exciting like this uh they meet they meet, there, there is no meeting for each of which them and they are watching they are at distance and when i uh, this is a story of two other my my friends two writers adarsh and paulson and firstly uh, mamuka mamuka sir come into my mind so uh, i need a actor like mamuti and i need a human being like mamuti so so i chose mamuti and uh, told to our story to him and he give a little bit suggestions uh, for for the entire screenplay 
is also entered in 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 every screenplay discussion not every in between uh, he also in, uh, involved with us sometimes he send whatsapp messages for oh, can we change like this can we add like this so the support was too great i have two writers and mamuti sir and including me we both are involved in the screenplay every time we change uh, all areas uh, for example that uh, interval possibly <coughs> so mamuti sir says that uh, i need a night contact with him so there is another another version is already be written in the screenplay so we change it that uh, that is what well all are saying that the interval uh, portion it's lovely yeah. yeah that is his suggestions that is it's what well and we me other chan portion work a lot that we both create all these all these little little things other chat one thing and portion will add something more and i will give a suggestion that's why we uh, created it and i also discussed with my editor my co director so i already told that uh, when i when i got a when i'm stuck in in doubts i will discuss with these guys only mm-hmm. so i will get an answer and uh, we we made a uh, interval block like this mamuti like that so that's the way speaking of interval blocks yeah. the other amazing interval block yes, yes, is yes yes kartik's is <laughs> yes, of course kartik's but also kartik's and nelson the, the the what you did in that so so in the pre interval sequence if of uh, uh, jailer is when you you've got rajini sir sitting on this dining table and it just kills me every time i think about it that he's organized this entire massacre without lifting a finger the killers coming to get him his wife and his daughter in law sitting opposite and at one point this is nuts okay a dead body falls on their laps and anisa just looks very cool and says just push it <laughs> <laughs> i just died when that happened i was like oh my god how in the world do you think of that how uh, actually interval block alone i was thinking that alone for a month for a month to, uh, how to stage that scene because i wanted him to be too cool in that scene the yes. whole film uh because rather than him fighting what happens around him should be like more interesting and never seen before in his films yeah so it i uh, uh, that thought process in that scene is like going on and on and on yeah uh, in uh, with the fight master he used to come every day and i we he used to show me few stagings we can do like that that then finally what happened i myself wrote the whole stunt like this because uh, he will have only some six seven dialogues what happens before the dialogue and after the dialogue how the body falls how it is falling in the ground so you scripted it out yeah it, it's totally scripted so uh, uh, and on the shooting day when the fight choreographer he used to ask me sir sir is rajini sir is doing is not doing anything is it okay is it okay so like this there are too many people are asking sir he is not at least in the end we love something <laughs> no other i to i told him yeah end he is doing something like this so see this is not enough for him he is a big hero sir so these decisions were little difficult for me yeah. whether it is right or wrong but uh, till that fight is over that confusion was there till the release as i said that con- this confusion was there throughout but uh, somewhere i liked that uh, whole staging and the sequence and i wanted him to be normally for me i like rajini sir when he is talking when he is doing that mass dialogues and delivering the dialogues his style and the way he speaks that one more than his fight yeah so i i consciously uh, avoided his fightings and i made it like that and finally it worked so it's okay if it's not worked then i am done the <laughs> dialogue <laughs> Uh, just, uh, <laughs> so it, oh, he has to do something. <laughs> That's right. They put a dead body on their laps yeah, but, and blood on their face. Just push it. Just push it exactly. <laughs> it was just fantastic. Kathi, tell me about your film. You know this this meta sprawling spiritual sequel. Uh, and again, we're back in, with a gangster. We're back with a filmmaker in that same territory. But this time, like you said, you put in the messaging, yeah. right? About the yeah. environment, about the elephants. Yeah. did you at any point have to struggle because this is something that happens a lot in the movies where the messaging overpowers the storytelling 
you know, you're so busy trying to give a message that somewhere the, the actual narrative starts to wobble. How did you find that path? And this is a movie in which there's also Clint Eastwood and there's, it, there's just so much happening. How did you find that exact way to kind of make it entertaining and deliver that message? Yeah. So basically, as I said before, this messaging part was not my priority initially because uh, my main motive with this film is to show what cinema can do as a yeah, it's the power cinema of as, cinema. Yeah. Yeah. So so when I'm when I'm showing something like this is what a cinema can do. I mean, it can bring a bigger change or a bigger can create a bigger revolution sort of a thing or a bigger political change or it can it can bring down. Uh, the, the, the overall the system which is trying to to people at all. So I wanted to show something which is uh, that can connect with us and also that is very strong. So that's when I, I said like initially the one which I had I, I was not at all convinced because this is not enough to show what the cinema can do. I mean because I'm in the end what I'm show, showing is actually that the camera which the, uh, the Radar's character is holding the cinema they are making is a hero of the film not yeah. not a uh, uh, the Caesar character or the moon, so that should be worth it because the story, what what they are capturing in the cinema, and then what is being shown in the audience in the film, and what ef the ripple effect that's creating should be bigger. So that's when uh, I, I when I got to know, I mean, this the story of a tribe that's being uh, a story of a genocide that's happening, and that has been, uh, I mean, because when I, when I, when I got into that research, I found out that this is not. A fictional story. I mean, there's there's a lot. I mean, throughout the world, if you take a forest, if you take tribes, there have been there has been incidents like this where I mean, uh, for that uh, pure uh, that wealth the yeah. forest. I mean, a lot of tribes have been displaced. A lot of uh, uh, tribes have been killed and everything. And what if there was a camera there shooting everything, and then we could see that means what kind of effect it would create. So that's when this messaging part came. So the main motive was not to tell this message but to show that okay uh, if if cinema could have been used in a better way in these situations or a, when a genocide is happening uh, it's, it's a oh, 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 it's uh, what's it uh, so it's a best case scenario which I thought like, right. what if cinema could have been used in that way right mm -hmm. right I also want to talk a little bit about casting uh, Konkuna like you cast Tilotama who is one of our finest actors and is, is always sort of, you know, straight jacketed in some sort of uh, a certain class of people or, or the house help and you totally turn that around. You cast her as the affluent upper class woman who comes home and finds her domestic help having sex on her bed. What is the magic of that? What is the excitement of that? that what you did, Vetri? You know, you see Suri and we think, okay, comic actor or you... Uh, Karthik, we see Raghava Lawrence, we see horror comedies, but you cast him completely differently. When you see an actor and you say, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to just switch this around completely. Tell me about that. Um, I think it's exciting uh, to see people who how you've not seen them before. Yeah. So it was, um, for me, it was exciting for her not to be the domestic worker. Because whether you're a domestic worker or whether you're the employer or a CEO of a company, it is not based on your looks. Actually, we do that in films sometimes, but in reality, it's anyway not like that. So there's no reason to adhere to what we've been doing kind of falsely in films anyway. We can just look at real life only. So that for me, what I enjoyed that very much. I liked the idea of, you know, changing that uh, particular casting around. That gave me a certain excitement. And I wish that people would cast more imaginatively. I think I've also suffered from that in a sense, because, you know, one has not... Like, I've, for example, not done too many gray roles, things like that. So it's nice to see people how you've not imagined them. Yeah, yeah. And is that also coming in a sense from your career as an actor? You know, maybe subliminally, but that I've not really thought of. I mean, in this particular case, it's because I myself was tired of seeing Tilotama regularly cast as uh, a domestic worker even though she's done a wonderful job Absolutely. and uh, she's amazing. some of these roles have been really well fleshed out as well so it's it's not that it's just that um, I mean I think she's a wonderful actress and actually honestly other than this um, I find her very modern in her sensibility and in her reactions and her uh, the way she expresses it's not something that you've seen before yeah. 
So that I wanted that and I wanted a slightly um, not necessarily very relatable. I wanted somebody who's a little quirky, who's a little bit of an oddball, maybe, you know, all those little elements which are already there in Tilottama in any case. Yeah, yeah. Avinash, I think of you as the master of stillness. You know, there's such a quietude in your cinema. And, and you said somewhere that I want to observe my protagonist. I don't want to intrude upon. Can you talk about that a little bit? Especially with this film, I guess, uh, after Patallo, because it was extremely dramatic. And then when you're shooting five, six pages a day, you know, continuously with that kind of an intensity. Uh, I, I wanted to come back to this kind of a space. Like, I'm a big fan of Rishikesh Mukherjee, and, uh, Sai Paranjpe, and, and their cinema, Gudar Saab. And, and, and uh, I, I, I really had not planned, like, it, it will be this observant kind of a film. Like, it, it's, it's a very talky sort of a film. Like, like Killa was not like this, you know. But it, it evolved, like, while shooting. Like I observed and, and actors were doing their things and, and obviously because Jaydeep Alawat, I, I didn't think of him. He was not my earlier choice. Like like it like all the casting, it, it fell through. Like this film, film I, I think it, it came to me. It like I didn't make it, you know. So so it was very instinctive sort of a choice. I, I just didn't feel like cutting. I just felt like ob observing and, you know, and, and every day by two o'clock we used to rap. You know, that's yeah, like just just a page and a two, and that's it. Like I I don't light at all because I I, I shoot mostly available lights, and and because I you know a series is a, is a very anxiety driven form. Something has to happen after after you know like it, it structure wise it's very different, and every every episode has to have that hook and this and yeah. that, and that's why feature film feature films catharsis is very different than the. Uh, than the series, like like if someone asks me like okay name a show which has changed your life, I don't know maybe a a, a a show or a two, but but with feature films if someone asks me like okay just tell me like what is the which is the film which which has changed your life? There's so many, you know because catharsis is completely different. So I I just wanted to come back to this sort of a space where no drama is happening, you know nothing is happening and just observe and feel and and see what kind of a catharsis it would happen yeah. because because pandemic. That that time was was like I I went through a lot of like emotional personal turmoil and I had to sort of like rest my case and come back to this and I'm glad that it happened. Well, your your film has all good people like Geo's film. They're all good people just struggling with their circumstances. Uh, I also want to talk about love stories because I interviewed Siddharth Anand in January right after Pathan. And he said to me, I'd love to make a love story, but I don't know how to make it anymore. How can you make a love story in today's times? But Himant, you made a very, very stirring love story. Karan, you did that as well. Uh, yours was happier, more joyous, left us a little more uplifted than yours, which just devastated me. Uh, but what is the trick to telling a love story today when, when the idea <clears throat> of relationships, when so much has changed? I actually don't think so much has changed. I <clears throat> am of the belief that the what we see is a lot of noise from today. But I'm not denying that there's there has been no change in terms of how relationships are looked at and how you know uh, how people talk about love today. It's it's far more experimental. People are far more experimental than before. But the ethos in terms of what demands of you to be in love is the same. You have to be ready for pain, right? You have to be ready to be uh, weak in front of somebody else. You can't have walls, right? I mean, I'm not talking about a relationship between, you know, two people in a romantic nature. It can be any, it can be collaborative also, yeah. even in a work environment. So there is a certain way, there's a certain demand that you have to give yourself to the other person and hope that the other person treats you with respect and care right that i think will be there as long as we exist that is fundamental to us as people so for me that became very important while scripting the story and when making the film because i wanted to focus on characters in terms of how they give themselves to each other and not really dramatize that 
like i wanted to capture everyday stuff things like you know the way they talk to each other the way they fight with each other like you know there is a certain habitual attitude towards couples that they don't realize that they have you know but for somebody who's like if i am in a coffee shop or if i watch a couple from a distance there is a certain voyeuristic element to love stories which make it feel like okay that moment is mine now you know when i watch money search films that's the reason why it stays with me because i feel like i was in that moment with somebody else yeah. but it's not my moment so i've always aspired to make a love love story because i want to have in my filmography all kinds of stories like i want to do like i wa- i've always wanted to do a love story i've always wanted to do an action film so i want to because i've grown up watching all of them but this the love story that i've made is the thing that i have at maximum impact on uh growing up so that's that's how that was sort of the uh fundamental idea around which me and my co-writer gundu approach the writing mm-hmm. to keep it very vulnerable keep it real you know we don't have to dramatize we don't have to explain what love is to people we have to assume that they know it we have to make them partake in that moment and create that slightly voyeuristic experience yeah. so that's how i went about it i was very doubtful but i'm glad it's it's worked karan for you you know you you you've been making love stories for 20 years now yeah but 25 so the irony is that uh i don't know anything about the male female that actually uh you know it's actually completely alien to me personally and i haven't even been in a strong relationship that's lasted long enough for me to tell stories of love mm-hmm. i have because when i grew up i grew up on the fodder of of romance and love in uh, in indian cinema and hindi cinema uh, raj kapoor and yash chopra vintage guru that uh, mm-hmm. they were all influences so all i was doing was all i was doing was deriving from cinema you know till i realized that i had to stop deriving because now everybody is going to catch it you know um mm-hmm. i couldn't do it anymore when the world woke up and social media arrived and there was internet really say and i was like okay now they could realize that you know actually all he's doing is imbibing this from suraj varjatia this from yash chopra this from <laughs> dulu that and i i said i have to stop doing it i have to start creating an individual voice yeah um and then every piece of um a drama or love came from my observations of other people and their relationships the thing is when you're single that long everybody comes and talks to you right even the couples who you're friendly with you hear the the female perspective and the male perspective and then suddenly you realize that you know there are many perspectives and you clap with both hands and i make kabhi alvida na kena because i was fed up of like people talking about their versions of infidelity either they took like the high ground with it and said that how you know you can't endorse infidelity and it shouldn't be the deal breaker or there were the others who were saying like why is it a deal breaker it's a mistake made you can still move on and i'm like what what do you mean that you are endorsing something like infidelity it's already sold out you know everyone's already you know it's a it's a weak spot in so many marriages we rush in on the carpet but it exists yeah. it exists so i was like that movie was made by a series of observations that i made and conversations i had had with very close friends otherwise i know nothing about infidelity i have to have a relationship first to cheat on them you know so i mean that is only not happens when where am i going to start cheating so it all happened from there that's why i made my name is khan right after that which was something i deeply was affected by in terms of like and then soon the way which i had to do nothing it was my holiday film uh i was not planning to climb any cinematic mountain with that film and nor did i and ariel then arrived as a love story but that was my story because i then in those 6 years fell in love with somebody that was not my and i understood what one sided love is then i realized that there is a creature called unrequited love that is heartbreaking it can shatter you to pieces to smithereens actually and there's a physical pain when we say heart ache it's not symbolic it is true it hurts it hurts as hell and you feel like 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 literally the earth has slipped by you know and you don't know what to do and i realized making that film uh that was the most cathartic journey i've ever had with the film uh and because everybody said the end is polarized and you know why 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 have you gone this way but it's just the way i took the narrative and uh at one point ranveer actually caught me because i was so invested in the material because it was coming to me the way i was saying the lines the way i was expressing the scenes 
He said, one second, am I playing you? Uh, <laughs> and I was like, yes. And he's like, Anushka is, I said, a person I would like to not meet for a while. So I was like, he's like, one minute, this is all coming together. Sit me down. He took me to his room. I think we, we got drunk talking about my, my love story. And the next day I felt like he had a spring in his step because he had, he had all the, 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 all the, uh, tools that he needed to perform. The raw material, part. yeah. Uh, so I don't know. And with Rocky Rani, I never reviewed it as a love story. I reviewed it as my homage to Hindi cinema more than anything else. Everything I grew up on, you know, the old song references, the characters, uh, the cultural differences. But what I did want to do is within that, bring in a commentary of things that I believe very strongly about. I grew up dancing uh, on my own to Indian music and being mocked at by my friends. <clears throat> Uh, I grew up very large and big fat shape. That made its way into the cinema. And I grew up again understanding that people can have love stories that they brush up with the carpet because I've known it of my own family. So Rocky Running is a series of my beliefs. It's a series of my convictions and, and also something like the cancel culture scene in the film is something that I firmly believe that because I was fed up of people telling you to shut up. You know, mm -hmm. when you say the wrong thing, I'm like, teach me. I might say the incorrect thing. Uh, we've grown up in a different circumstance, you know, we've grown up saying things and using words, terminologies that we don't mean to be offensive, but you know, they, it's just the way we grew up. It's the way we were taught. I realized much later what, what stalking was, um, was criticized for was I thought was intense romance. I was like this man chasing this woman and really pursuing her, how romantic, till one day I was sat down and even a lecture was way up, well, no less, and she <laughs> told me that that's stalking. It's that stopping that's incorrect. I felt there was passion in that, you know. Um, I, and you know, when you see all all of that that you do and the mistakes that you make, you made like the gender politics of kuch kuch hota hai, I understand are incorrect as compared to the gender politics of Rocky Run. Because now I've evolved, I've understood, and you know, and then then. Then you have someone like Sandeep Banga ready telling you like, why are you listening to anybody? Just do your own thing. <laughs> uh, right. And I'm like, still, I feel like you've got to kind of understand that with age comes evolution. It's being a parent specifically, a uh, parent of twins, a boy and a girl, you understand how important gender politics are. Because you've been raised in a certain way and you don't want to make those mistakes. You don't want to tell your children that, oh, you wear pink boogie and you wear blue. Correct. It's okay for both of them to wear pink and blue. And also, you don't tell the boy that don't cry like a girl. It's just the most peculiar. So I have to train even the people at home not to say these things, you know. So I, when you say love story, I'm like, the irony is that I wouldn't know the first thing about love, you know. And I've only made a career out of it. So, uh, you know, stranger things have happened, but this is the strangest part of my career. <laughs> I have a few more questions. Um, <clears throat> Avinash, Gio... Kokana, you all work in a lower register, right? The tonality is, 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 is sort of more hushed, you know? Uh, and when we talk, when we look at massive films, right? Uh, we look at the tent poles in theatres. Um, we look at massive stars. Uh, and those, and the conventional wisdom always says that, okay, this is what's working. This is what people will come to theatres for. Do you all ever think about how will I nurture my aesthetic? How will my story go out into the world? I mean, is it daunting at all? Um, no, I, I don't have to worry about that really actually yet. I've not had to worry about that kind of thing now because... Uh, in both the films in Death in the Gunge and in uh, Love Stories, I think it was just, it came from a personal space. I didn't think anybody would give me money to make it. Even when I made it, I didn't know if anybody would come to watch. So I had to please myself. Um, and even in uh, Love Stories, I think, honestly, I was so excited by the idea myself. I was just like, scandalized myself, you know, by the whole thing. <laughs> And I found it just so exciting. It was scandalous. I was like, oh my God, can we? Oh my God, should we? And then how to go about it in a way that is even uh, palatable. Yeah. That itself and how to present that. It was so exciting. Even uh, like earlier when you were talking about camera and it was, I was thinking, you know, when somebody was answering, I was thinking things like consent. 
like for example the camera only goes inside the room with seema only when seema knows that ishita is watching before that the, we don't go inside you know so all of that was so exciting to think of how to translate that or how to because you know when we were writing the script so the whole obviously the floor plan and the layout was so important because of the mirror and you know so then putting all of that inside a house how will we make that happen trying to you know like a few times we've done for example what is a not a real split screen but a like a manual almost split screen foreground background me because they are from two different parts of society you know yeah. those kind of things so all of that had consumed me me and pooja tolani my co writer and we had a lot of fun with that luckily we didn't have to think of these kind of things till now i have not had to <laughs> i want to take a moment and address the last moment in kokanas the one between tilottam and amrita um I don't know if I've seen a more sparkling display of talent left just to their own device by the vegetable vendor. Yeah. And I really felt like only an actor could direct the scene oh. because there are there are pauses, there are silences, there is awkwardness and yet there is resolve. At the end of it all there's a resolve and done so seamlessly. I went back and I rewound and I watched that scene thrice. you know it's it's really because it moved me on many levels and layers and i been i mean i know i spoke to you but like you that that moment besides the entire film and how genius it was in its projection that moment and i beseech everyone to go and visit that film and specifically as filmmakers of cine files observe that moment i thought it was tremendous it oh is, my god it thank is. you <laughs> thank you. <laughs> do you what about you do you wonder or do you just make your cinema Yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, right now, I got a tagline that I'm I'm a feminist kind of filmmaker, a political filmmaker. I have to change that. Personally, I love action movies. Uh, for me, the, there is a reason for action. In in our films, in our mass kind of films, in two hour, more than ten thousand people <laughs> died. <laughs> there is no reason for that. Well, Nelson, you want to address no, that? No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I, I already told. Uh, I already told Karthik that I love this movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah so that is okay, sir. You can. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to change myself. That I, I have to try the comedy. I have to try the uh, these kind of movies, Jailer and Karthik kind of movies. And I don't know why I reach the, the same kind of movies. And when society affect me. my fa- our families affect me relationship affects me so uh, for career wise uh, profession wise i have to try all genres so i am for next i'm trying different one i'm trying keep trying <laughs> not sure <laughs> what is my next but well, you're doing a great job yeah. and i think feminist filmmaker is a great tag yeah yeah, yeah 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 but but continuously love that film if there is no feminism in my film people try to find out feminism in my movies <laughs> <laughs> yeah you just have to have yeah, it yeah there there is a politics in my movies yeah. i know that yeah but i made a movie named sri thanya catering service yeah it's it's people not watched that yet it's in the amazon prime it's released in theater it's not work well people didn't connect that movie hmm. i tried a comic piece of something yeah but it didn't work well but we will find out there is a feminism in that movie <laughs> <laughs> there is it why that is not loud i don't know that i i am trying to break out all this for you avnash i think i i want to do every kind of film it's yeah. like it's it's um, mukul aran was my most favorite director you know like i've grown up watching guddu danu as our films you know but it's like uh where you are what kind of impact and what kind of resources you are going to get you know like when i when i when i passed out from fti i i knew that like i don't know anyone and my journey of, in, in fact i chose cinematography as like i opted learning cinematography is because i i didn't have any other option i was like i don't want to die out of hunger like it's 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 at, at least calm matlab you just have to be on the set and and i was like agar filmo ke bare mein baatein karte karte bhi your life goes on it's fine you know so so just just to to be on set and everything that was enough and it happened such that my 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 first release was my own film and after that i i i was like what what just did happen you know it it, it went to berlin whatever happened after that 
and and my bread and butter was not depending upon cinematography so i was very sort of like okay i want to make a regional film and that's that's where my passion lies and this and that and i sort of like i i i i didn't have any other subject it took me a long time to come back to directing when sudeep sharma offered me patal lok and it, it was not like i i didn't get any offers or this or that but i was very sort of like loyalist to what kind of film script i want to be part of and and i never sort of like i knew that like of course his films have been like very matlab main monologues de sakta hu main yahan pe baith ke you know it's it's really really so to so, uh, yeah so the three of us was a very sort of like strategic sort of a move yeah in a way because i was like no one is making this kind of film right now and i have four to five months and if i can crack this down right now let me just see like if it happens and and it it was kind of an audacious sort of a uh, you know thinking like just i did you know i just and and whatever i'm i'm writing next is very different i'm writing a western musical this that very different it's change notes with him you know I, of course making a western big, big fan <laughs> of his big fan of his like you know the the way he uses background score and like his editing style and everything yeah. huge fan i am you know so 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 that's that's why so it's it three of us was very strategic you know like yeah ye abhi ho sakta hai baad mein mujhe nahi pata ye aisa mujhe karna hai nahi karna hai i don't know yeah you know and as, as far as the distribution is concerned uh, uh i there i i sort of like went a little off radar with the with the because i i felt like okay this space is new and uh, we didn't think like patal look will become such a huge hit back then but just because like it it released during pandemic and all that it it became a rage and it was also and, and, very good yeah and and we were just sitting in in our houses and uh, like and didn't even get a chance to celebrate uh, whatever like you know yeah. like people are just calling and this and that and 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 but but you know uh, particularly with this film i felt like it is it is very correct it's it's correct film for ott yeah but then no one was buying it you know and i'm like oh oh what i you know so that that was a little sort of like big because what happened during the pandemic the decisions uh, whatever like and you know how yeah. how, how yeah. things are so it's, it's been a great learning experience but i i'm, I'm very happy that like we, it it found its own very limited release and whoever has seen the film they're writing and uh, i'm i'm very happy with that and it is it is going to come out in couple of months time so yeah how lovely no i think good work finds an audience okay two more questions I want you to <coughs> pick one Indian film that you saw this year that just blew your mind that you wish you had made. Vetri, let's start with you. Okay. <laughs> I I I haven't seen much, but I from whatever you see, it's not no, it's not this year. Uh, I don't I don't think I would say that. I wish I had made it. I wouldn't say that, but I really liked Kurangal, uh, Pebbles. Oh yeah. Yeah, I really liked the notes film. Yeah, yeah. I it was fantastic. It. Yeah. yeah, I saw it last year, but I would still say that it was the best one that I saw. Kartik, ah, say day. We mean now that I saw that I felt this is my as as they blew me off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Towards side B, I told him, but uh, side A was more than enough for me. <laughs> 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 you don't care what happened to Manu. Oh, no, I wanted to see, but uh, still, I have not come out of that. Yeah, it's it's about. it's an intoxicating. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. Nelson, for you, for me, Dada and Kamal. It's a small film, but it connected very well to me. I felt well, it's uh, very real, and it had uh, all sort of emotions like uh, feel good and uh, emotion and everything was there, and it fitted well. But yeah. and I like Pebbles, of course, Pebbles. I don't know whether I can pull it off, but. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can make. I would like to do something like that. Really? Yeah. Dada and Tirchi Trambalam last year. Oh, I love Tirchi. <clears throat> yeah. Something fantastic. like that. Some rom com or fully romance. Something, something like smaller, that. less people yes, dying. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> less crowd in the spot. <laughs> no, <laughs> nobody cutting anyone's head off. <laughs> no, 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 no. Actually, I am far from that. I don't know. It's automatically happening like that. I like to do films like very, very small films and romantic films. Right. That's what I want to do, but I don't know what I do. <laughs> okay, as far as it go, well, it goes well. It's okay. Karan, I loved side A and side B. Um, I had the privilege of seeing side B. He sent me a link very kindly. Uh, when I saw side A, which was on Amazon, uh, 
I'm going to try and get the pronunciation of the name. It's Sapta Sagara Chailo. Sapta Sagara Chailo. Close, oh, very close. Okay. <laughs> Sap- <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but when I saw it, it was just like, yeah. to me, it was like a heartbreaking love story. It but is. But it was also so emotionally fulfilling. And, you know, it was like, and I love that the film begins with the love story. It, and they're so, they're going about it in such a, like a lived in way, yeah. you know, and, the, and they're on their hunt for the house and, and when it ended, I was like, you know, I really felt like a stone on my heart at that time. You know, it really just felt like so. And then I was waiting, waiting, waiting. And then, you know, I, as soon as it landed, uh, he sent uh, me the link. And I, I saw it just day for yesterday night. And I felt very complete. Yeah. And, and uh, so I would say yes. I mean, I watched some very special films. Everyone here has made such amazing, amazing work. Commercially successful films are, in fact, the toughest to make. Yeah, absolutely. To me. Uh, to pack in the ingredients uh, of Jigathanda or Jailer and to do what like everyone here, what Vetri has been doing for centuries. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's like he's, he's really such a master. Yeah. Uh, but even to do what Konkana did, I mean, like, which is like I just told you about that moment that blew my mind. Um, but that the, this series and Avinash's exotic work has stayed with all of us. Uh, but this particular series of two films really moved. Yeah. Tolkana, so kind, you know, always so generous you are, Karan. Um, I have to say that I have not uh, watched very much. Unfortunately, I have to watch that. Uh, and uh, today, so I'm going to go back tonight and watch the side A, side B. <laughs> I'm dying to watch that now. Um, so I can't exactly remember this year ka what it was. Sure. But something that has really uh, stayed with me, I think, is Great Indian Kitchen. Uh, I think it's because... It's so normalized. We've all grown up like... I mean, in two different degrees like this, but to know when to shine a light on what and how to present it, that really blew my mind. I was like, oh my God, why didn't I think of this? This is like a, I mean, I found it a very modern, almost like a horror gore story and very feminist and really strong. And uh, yeah, I love that. Yeah. Fabulous film. Gio, what did you like? Uh, my favorite is uh, B32, Mudal Mudal means 244 Vare. Uh, it's about, it's a it's brass size, B32 to 244. Uh, directed by Sruti and produced by Kerala government and released in theater. Uh, but uh, one of my favorite movie, uh, directed by a woman, only woman can make that movie. That's why I, I like very much that. One of my favorite, all time favorite movies. And we got a new post question, new view yeah. uh, about woman. I can't make that. I can't think about that kind of things. It's all about boobs. Great film. Really? I, I have yeah. to catch that. I haven't seen yeah. that it's yet. It's not yeah. available right now in the OTT. Yeah. I think it will come in soon. Maybe our government start an OTT platform. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's produced by government. But there is a lot of problem for watching these movies for the public. Yeah. yeah. So... You must watch that. I will. Absolutely. Yeah. Avinash, for you? For me, it's uh, Vinod Sir's 12th pain. Like it's, Thank you. Yeah. I'll take that back yeah. to him. Yeah, yeah. I, I was like really moved. Really moved. Avinash suggested I get him on the round table. I said, no, that's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> dying to watch that. I haven't seen yeah, that yet. I've been I, hearing I, just the best things. Yeah. No, it's, 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 it's really He'll special. Very it's, it's very special. Very, yeah. very special. Thank you. I, I actually haven't had the chance to watch too many films so i have a huge list of films to catch up on starting with vetri sir's yeah. film i'm a huge fan of vetri sir grown up you know like my uh the the director that i used to assist was vetri sir's mm-hmm. uh, yeah, i've 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 met him as an lady yeah <laughs> he's met me as a lady to be yeah. sitting yeah. here uh with him is like a very big deal for me yeah. even uh karthik uh, he when i saw jigar Tanda, the first part I hadn't made my first film yet. I remember the feeling of walking out of the theater and feeling that sense of, I'm a filmmaker, you know. Oh. I will not give up on my dream. Oh. And uh, it's a very special thing to be sitting here and I will be watching their films, all the films. Yeah. But uh, there are moments, the two films that I saw was Sir's Rocky and Rani. The whole thing, I was telling Sir right before the conversation that the dance sequence, the way it is choreographed. Yeah. People take dance for granted in Indian films. The the amount of effort that the that that uh, Ranveer and uh, the other actor, I forget the name of the gentleman, 
it's so beautiful the way he i mean and the point that it is making yeah that you know a man can dance and there is nothing to laugh about it so beautifully made so beautifully shot uh and in jailer uh the that whole entry of shivanna shivanna is mm-hmm. from from canada and i'm a huge fan of shivanna so his entry with the tissue box it is just the slow it's, motion it's, yeah it's, <laughs> it's for me it is everything that is that is not a mass film should be yeah right you do the whole structuring of the scene is so fresh because you expect the hero to come and beat 30 people in this film he does exactly the opposite he comes and gives a tissue box like in the interval rajvi sir is just sitting he is not doing anything that sort of reinventing the wheel yeah. is very very beautiful to watch and it's the hardest thing to do because you're not doing films only for yourself uh you're also trying to you know maintain an artistic sensibility while catering to people who you might not relate to even you know so uh that was like a very big moment but i have seen all the trailers of all the films i'm going to watch all of them how oh, lovely okay i want to i want to end with something that writer director paul schrader said in an interview okay and then i quote he said in the late 60s and 70s it wasn't that the films were better or that the filmmakers were better it was the audiences were better the moment that a society turns to artists for answers great art will emerge when audiences don't think movies are important it's very hard to make important movies do you think this is true and what is our current moment are audiences seeking answers i feel that's very true because today. especially especially in uh, today in tamil scenario uh when i was making visarnai i used to tell my team if this film works in the theaters then i would call the tamil mainstream audiences the most evolved mainstream audiences and it did work in theaters and for the kind of space i have been enjoying whatever that i said now it's because people kind of connect and appreciate the film that the films that i've been making which are not the the, the you cannot call them the most uh, uh, conventionally mainstream they are mainstream films i do make mainstream films but not in a very conventional way i i do have a different take on mainstream uh, films to appreciate those those films and uh, to make my producers invest on me the way they do it it's the audiences also we have a tradition of voicing out like or th- th- there's a lot of political expression that happens through the viewers and there is some element of uh, a common man issue that is being discussed addressed it is appreciated and now that that thing is catching up with the whole of the indian uh, cinema space i think any film that that discusses even the slightest of the common man issues uh hindi films were not i might be wrong here but my observation i'm just sharing my observation were not very common man representative for the for the past uh, so, so, some years like couple of decades or even more i don't know but now when there is some references from even other languages or films that are being made here itself where there is a common man representation uh, uh, an existential crisis of a common man like uh, uh, or, or a political question that he needs to put forth if that is seen on cinema people do like it when and in today's world like all my everybody in the distribution industry there in tamil say post covid is the golden era of theatrical cinema cinema exhibition it's like the numbers are like huge now everybody are talking numbers is the the competition is with the numbers okay this hero is doing that number that hero is doing this number it's just that the people are now very uh loving and forgiving also post covid they want to come to theaters they want to watch films and films that make a difference in this in in today's <coughs> political scenario is also being appreciated 
So I feel it is the audiences who are driving us to make the kind of films that we are. Yeah. I'm saying it in a very positive way. Absolutely. My Absolutely. Anyone else, Karan? Look at where we are right now. I mean, look at look at look at the directors on your route table, and you know that so much is changed. I mean, you know, five years ago you would not have a route table yeah. like this, and today it means that we're we're talking about Indian cinema now. We're talking about films made in Tamil, and Telugu, and Malayalam, and Kannada, and Hindi, and Marathi, and Punjabi, and that in every language. And I do agree with 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 Vetri when I I feel like there's a celebration in cinema halls all over again. I've grown up in single screens. I've grown up in in all the single screens of of, of Mumbai and going in watching films as a celebration, like watching entries and getting the whistles and you know dancing to songs and coming back and wanting to go back again. And I feel like post COVID, just like like he suggested, it's like I think the three years that people were just like bottled um, has actually made them want to enjoy and celebrate. Almost revenge watch movies, yeah. Yeah. like, and that's what's happening. And now everything joyous, not just larger than life, joyousness that's coming from the moment, the celebration, the celebratory nature of Indian cinema. I think all those movies are really like those audiences are back in throes and they're going nowhere. At one time, you know, we were we were we were graveyarded. It was like it's over for us. Like you know, we should shut shop and just start going to uh, streaming services. But that's not true. Because now streaming services will tell you that they're struggling with kind of numbers and subscriptions. <laughs> yeah. Because now everyone is going back to cinema halls and look at the resurgence of talent that has just come back. When you see, uh, I, I specifically mean like in the cinema and including Rajni sir's success that he has got with Jailer is so validating. Seeing Shah Rukh return after five years, seeing Sunny Deo at age 66 give his biggest hit to his career, Anil Sharma. You know, literally see people like, see, Vinod Chopra yes. makes such a massive hit, who's known for such prolific work and there's been a large sabbatical, you know, and now he emerges and like, just look at the year. It's just like, it's, it's almost brilliantly audacious what's happening. We have so much more to come. This year will go down um, as one of the most profitable, like, profitable years of Indian cinema. If you just see the numbers, that just means there's a, huge appetite for celluloid again there's a huge appetite for community viewing and uh, yes we learned so much from the power of the digital medium and there's so much talent that comes from there and that we at cinema leverage but that magic of the large screen it's going nowhere that is the best note to end on thank you everyone yeah. and again thank you for the movies um uh, Go back and make many more. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having us.